And then uh, this week, we had a class on terms of So, I hope you've been able to do the assignment I gave to you on vowels. I asked you, I gave you some words, and I asked you to write the phonetic symbol, which we were taught. All the vowels contained in the words which were given that you should indicate them in front of the words. I haven't gotten any assignment that has been submitted yet. I am still waiting for the assignment and please I encourage you to do the assignment. And remember, I asked you that I told you that you may use your dictionary so that you would know where the transcription or where the vowels are in those words. Now, today we are going to treat emphatic stress. Emphatic stress. Emphatic stress. This is also a part in the oral test. You would have the test of oral, other test of oral, you have, sorry for the brief. Now, let's consider the meaning of emphatic stress. Emphatic stress simply means the placement of articulatory prominence on a particular word in a sentence. The placement of articulatory prominence on a particular word in a sentence, meaning that you, it meaning that in articulating that word that is being underlined in a given sentence, you articulate it with more energy. In your examinations, you would find out that you are given some, you are given a question, a sentence, and then you are given other sentences which are options. And maybe in the first sentence which serves as a question, a word is being underlined. And you also have other sentences as the options where you still have a repetition of the words in the sentence that was given. Example, you have this. Adam's wedding ring is made of gold. Adam's wedding ring is made of gold. Now, this one is the stress. The emphasis which your attention is being drawn to is the word gold. Now, this is you will be given options like, and the options are always in an inter interrogatory sentence. Is Adam's ring, is Adam's wedding ring made of gold? Option B, is your friend's ring made of gold? C, is your mother's ring made of Silver. And D is is the teacher's necklace made of gold. Now, when students
students are being asked this question, it causes a lot of confusion. Now, follow me attentively. Adam's wedding ring is made of gold. Now, these are the options. You will find out that gold is where it's being emphasized. The emphasis here is on gold, so that is why it is written in capital letters. Now, the options, the first option says, is Adam's wedding ring made of gold? Now, the question is, Adam's Sorry, the statement is Adam's wedding ring is made of gold. Now you have to find the correct option. How do you find the correct option in this given option? The second option says, is your friend's ring made of gold? C, is your mother's, is your mother's ring made of gold? Is the teacher's necklace made, sorry, is your mother's ring made of silver? D, is the teacher's necklace made of gold? Now, you shouldn't be confused because you have your friend's ring is made of gold, is that that's ring made of gold. You wouldn't take the first option, which is option K, as the answer because you would think that since it still repeats at that the option that this should be the correct answer. It is wrong. What you would do is that you go to the word which emphasis is being placed on. It is gold. Then we are talking about gold here. So any other option that is different from the emphasized word becomes the answer. So the answer to this question, to this statement is it's your mother's ring made of gold. Don't forget about the other part of silver, of silver, thank you. It's your mother's ring made of silver. Now, this one, silver, would become the answer because it is not the same, it is different, or it contradicts the emphasized word. Is it understood? Is it understood? I say, let me repeat it. My let me repeat myself. If you're given a question like this, Adam's wedding ring is made of gold. Usually, the question comes in a statement form. Then the options are being given in an interrogative manner, in, in an interrogative form. What you do is that you go, you check, you first check the word that is being emphasized in the statement and look through the options. If you find out any word that is different from the underlying word at the end of the sentence, it means that that is the answer. So we do not have gold here, we have silver, but the others talked about gold. So the one with a different emphasis here the word was emphasized becomes the answer. Is there any question? Do you understand? Let's proceed. Now, let's take another example. Her mother is a nurse. We have the first option is her father a nurse. Is her mother a doctor? A 
Now, I want you to give me the correct answer. Her mother is a nurse. Nurse is being emphasized. Now, we have option A. Is her father a nurse? Option B, is her mother a doctor? C, are you a nurse? And D, who is a nurse? Remember that we have emphasis on the word nurse. So the correct answer would be something different or a word that replaces nurse, which is different from the emphasized word, which is what? Doctor. Doctor. Thank you very much. So you shouldn't come be confused and don't bother about the other sentences. Like her mother is a doctor, and then you see, is her mother, or are you, sorry, her mother is a doctor. Then, if we can't this, is her mother, okay, is her mother, uh, Is a mother a lawyer? So if you contradict this, it is different from the emphasized word. So it becomes the answer. Now let's go to rhymes. Rhymes. Now we have rhymes in English language, in oral English and literature. You must remember that rhyme in literature means the similarity of words, words that sound similar at the end of uh, a, a, a sentences in a line. Example, if you have if you have a poem with let's say five lines, and then the word at the end of each line rhymes together with all the words at the end of all the lines. That is what we call rhyme. Similarity of, sorry, words that sound alike at the end of the lines in a poem. Now, when we talk about rhymes in English language, sorry, in oral English, we are talking about still words that sound alike usually at the end. Remember, like in literature, in things I quote from coast to coast, giving him my toes as the Lord of Hosts. Now, this is an excerpt from a poem, and these are different lines lines one, line two, line three, line four. And you see that this word, both, rhymes with hosts. That is a sound alike. Oh, close sounds similar with toes, and then toes also sounds like toes. So these three, sorry, these four words at the end of these four lines sound alike. So this is what we refer to rhymes in literature, that is in words. Now, let's look at rhymes in oral English.
beginning of writing oral English. There are words that sound similar and they mean the same. Maybe you have two or three words that have similar sounds at the terminal at or sound similar or alike at the end. Words that have similar sounds at the end, or words that have identical sounds at their terminal, words that are identical to another word at its terminal sound. That is the terminal sound, that's the ending sound, has the same sound or sounds alike with another word. Example, you have the word tree. Now you have stream and dream. You would find out that at the beginning of the word, str and dr sound different. Str and dr sound different. Then where the sound alike is at the ending part of the word, which is this and this. You'll find out SCR sound different from DR. So where the sound is alike is that rain, stream, rain, and yes, rain and rain for for stream and dream. You also have other words such as first and third, first and third. First and third. You find out that. The initial sound for first is what? Foot. So it's different. And two for third. So the ending sound now becomes S. So first and third sound alike. That is what rhymes mean in oral English. If you're given a word like a question like this. So find the word that sounds alike or that rhymes with the given word. Example, you have, you're given the word mess. And you're asked to find a word that has a similar sound with the word mess. And you're given something like, Given parts. The your given option here are ten. See your given. Word like pursue.
you need to wear it next. The first option says fat. You won't, it is not pronounced as fat. It is fat because it has this sound, the cat sound here. It is the sound that replaces this B. So it's not fat, it's fat. Then you have to wear sand. You have fresh shoe, and then you have fresh. So, what is which option is the correct answer? Hmm. Oh, my Come and see the teacher. The teacher, you want to have a Yeah, no, that's what they are doing now. Uh, I want to ask questions. Don't call people to come and see me. Ask me questions and give me answers to the questions I'm answering. Ugo Abasi, you're here. I want you to ask me questions. Bob. But is Julia that is speaking with the as Okay, Juliet. She said that the thing is disconnected. My classmate, she said the thing is disconnected. It's back home. Consonant at a particular position in a word. You are given the word strength, and you have three consonant clusters here. Then it would be at the first position, that is at the initial position, that is at the beginning of a word. Now you have the middle position. Example, you have the word, you have the word betray. Betray. Now, be Why is your down? That why do we have letter E here? That letter E is about is omitted because you would have this So we find out that this E is silent. So we should go in your translation and then also sound the words that you use. So the pronunciation of your word will determine 
Thank you very much and have a nice day.